robust leakage of an oil facility in Bayelsa State pollutes the waters of Sangama Kingdom, putting fishermen out of work. The community is now calling for government and international aid. We'll be diving deep into that issue. Victor will see him in the charge after surgery, but there are doubts if he will be able to make it to the African Cup of Nations in January. We'll be taking a look at the national dailies this morning like we always do. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. And I am Messi Boko. It's good to have you join us this beautiful Friday morning. And as usual, we set up with uh, Top Trending. Uh, usually conversations generating uh, a lot of reaction across the entire country in different spaces, by the way. On uh, Top Trending this morning, we, we, we look at the number one is the fact that you know, the Commissioner of uh, Police for Lagos State, Hakim Odumusu, says Lagos State is the safest right now in the entire country. And that's uh, because he's also saying uh, this period in time, you know, uh, people coming to the city, coming to the state, do business, and they can go about their normal businesses and go out without any issues. Also, as a way of saying, it's all right to come into Lagos State and enjoy the festive period without any issues. As, you know, there will be... Um, plans to ensure that everyone is protected nothing is going to happen to anyone mm -hmm. uh, that's it but you know that has also generated a lot of conversation a lot of people are saying oh how safe are we really sure what is the indices how did we arrive at all of this uh, and for me i would say <laughs> it feels like when you start bragging these elements begin to hear you and like we're going to show up and then show you what it is like we'll show you pepe like we say in our local parlance a uh, message that is indeed uh, you know what uh, is to be expected you know, but when he comes out and says uh, that lagos is uh, the safest uh, state in nigeria I, I don't know what yardstick uh, he used or yardsticks he used in uh, coming out with such a uh, you know statement because I personally, would I say I have suffered, you know, some challenges security-wise uh, in the past uh, few months. Uh, so just I've had uh, reported cases uh, of, uh, I mean, pocket cases, uh, you know, of uh, violence and uh, security challenges in Lagos State, uh, specifically on the mainland. So if he is saying that Lagos is the safest uh, state in Lagos, maybe he's blowing his own in trumpet. Nigeria in Nigeria rather, so he's playing his own trumpet, why not allow, you know, the residents themselves come out and actually give you that praise instead of you, you know, acting like the proverbial, you know, uh, lizard who says, if you don't praise me, I'll praise myself. And uh, uh, I think it's based on the premise that, first of all, he stated that uh, traffic robbery, robbery during traffic has actually reduced mm. because of clamp down on the hoodlums and what have you. And, but like you rightly mentioned, I mean, you still have incidents where uh, you have some element out there who will take advantage of people or sorts, you know, those ones who would use means and take you to uh, extract monies from you, make you take monies, those who would actually, they call it one chance. Mm. Also, all of this still ongoing. So I, I think that there's, there's a lot of work to be done. And uh, like a security expert actually mentioned uh, some time, usually I think it's not important for us to begin to talk about the things that we're doing because security is a very sensitive issue. It and is. we're dealing with people who are, at, at some point you would say that they're working even uh, ahead of you. you. Mm. They're working ahead of you. And in a situation where you have the Nigerian police force not having everything uh, you know, within its powers to fight crime and criminality, it's important that you would just keep it low. But it's a good thing. I just feel like we should just double the effort. There's a lot that needs to be done. Uh, you know, you still have pickpockets, you still have theft, you still have issues of people. I mean, all sort of issues. Yes, you might just say, okay, X, Y, Z has actually reduced, but necessarily... Uh, you know, I just think that there's a lot of work that needs to be done. We commend the effort, however, and we also see there's a lot of work that needs to be done. You can't also take out the fact that uh, as much as we're saying, oh, it's safest place, how about, you know, the harassment from police officers? That's also another threat. So mm -hmm. how safe is that? I mean, how safe are we? Uh, the fact that you constantly experience police brutality as, you know, you go about your uh, business. All right, maybe if he uh, based uh, his uh, assumption 
on the comparison between uh, Lagos policing and maybe uh, uh, other police commands across uh, Nigeria, he might want to come and say that uh, we have indeed uh, been doing so much in our command vis-a-vis uh, -vis the numbers of arrests that have been made and the numbers uh, that have been, you know, been prosecuted in court. And of course, uh, maybe over time, the reports they are getting uh, is that uh, the hoodlums maybe have a bit uh, quelled some of the operations uh, in uh, the state. But then again, I just feel that um, when they have done good, we should be the one commending them and not let them praise themselves. That's just my humble opinion, if I have No, but we, 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 we can't say that, you know, they're not doing enough. They're doing enough. Everyone is doing enough. I but agree. we say that there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Another issue I must also appreciate is the fact that he mentioned uh, the collaboration, that all of this has not been achieved all by the Nigerian Police Force Board the in collaboration, collaboration with other, you know, security agencies. agencies yes. And usually, if you find out, uh, you know, the struggle that the challenge that the security uh, you know force actually experience is the fact that there's always a disconnect with other sister bodies I mean all the security agencies so yeah. uh, I like the fact that credit was actually given to all the security agencies not entirely the Nigerian police force but however we're saying there's a lot of work that needs to be done I'm also thinking that whatever it is that whatever plans that we have uh, we should just you know keep it very low because it's a very sensitive issue and so we know the people that we're dealing with uh, we we'll just keep all of this you know in secret and then go ahead to work yeah then again to add to all of that the fact that uh, there was interagency collaboration you know to achieve that particular fit is something i would give the lagos state government uh, you know kudos for because uh, in as much as uh, some people are saying that there's a proliferation of uh, various agencies in Lagos, but sometimes when you just take your time and try to analyze, you, you would understand that they are actually doing things and um, we can see the impact of all of their, their work. For instance, uh, we have last month, we have uh, the neighborhood security watch and all of that. We even have uh, local vigilantes here and there the Odwa, uh, the OPC, uh, you know. So over time, they work together in unison and uh, where the police cannot ordinarily get to on time, you know. I've, I've heard cases of um, robbery and um, it was the members of the OPC that uh, came in handy and on time, you know, to help, you know, solve the situation. And eventually those uh, bad guys, as it were, were taken to the police station. Well, uh, like I mentioned earlier, earlier, uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, and, um, mm. and we commend the efforts and all that's been done. But I think that we need to do more to ensure yes, that. Yes, like Oliver you know, Twist, we will demand more. Safe. Yeah. Also, again, uh, Nigel petrol price is the lowest in West Africa. That's according to uh, an index, uh, you know, you know, put together by the cable. You know, Mercy. Over time, I've heard. Uh, you know, reports that uh, we pay one of the least prices when it comes to fuel uh, in the continent, in the world. But then again, if you want to me measure all of this, it's not just about um, what we are paying uh, per pump price. It's also about um, what we are earning, you know, vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, putting them together side by side as per how sustainable it could be or it is because even if we are paying uh, the lease price our purchasing power the value of the naira is not really s something to write home about at the end of the day we don't really earn that much you know to sustain you know these are uh, basic uh, things that we spend monies on right, valid points that you have raised uh, right there we don't earn that much so you want to ask yourself uh, what is the minimum wage for us right mm. now and you also want to begin to ask yourself, like we uh, mentioned earlier on, I mean, in the course of a conversation, you would also find out that there are some basic things that need to be in place. And as soon as you have these basic things in place, it is easy. Okay, it's easy. So in comparison, <laughs> as much as we have on that list, you want to ask yourself, these countries that we're being compared with, we are the largest producer of crude oil in mm. West Africa, Nigeria is. Nigeria is a giant of Africa. Nigeria should not be importing her crude. We have no business, however, importing crude. 
uh, you know, our fuel, however you want to put it. Mm, so, fuel. but it's it's uh, it's quite unfortunate that as the highest producer of you know uh, crude in West Africa and the region, we're now comparing ourselves with these other countries, mm. uh, where we should be living by example. First of all, we have the crude, we export it, and then to get refined um, to, petrol. So why don't we have our refiners working? Mercy, I mean, all of this you to put do. together. So mm. it doesn't, it, you know, because in comparison, mm. uh, according to the laws that actually guide comparison, you mm. need to compare things that are unlike poles. And you also begin to know that, okay, it's the same. So they have similarities and what have you. So if you look at some of those factors, I'm thinking that how did we even arrive at that? It is really, it doesn't really, really add up for us to begin to compare ourselves. I feel, I feel that it gives us up, you know, it gives us a way. It exposes our weakness if we actually do that, because that's what's going on. How many of this, I mean, these countries that we have actually, uh, you know, put ourselves against, uh, how much quantity of crude do they even produce? How how many of these countries, you know, produce crude, you know, in this instance? So you begin to talk about basic infrastructure, standard of living. In 2016, a report actually had that, you know, uh, Nigeria at the time, 59% of our population had access to electricity. Meanwhile, mm. in Egypt at the time, 100% had access to electricity. I mean, so you begin to, there, there are all the factors that you just begin to use to measure. Now we have a situation where the government is saying, Oh, we want to take away. We can't continue with the subsidy because you know the resources that we spend on subsidy 1.8 trillion naira uh, would be actually used for other uh, you know projects, hospital, uh, you know road infrastructure, and what have you. But the question would be, you know, how much of this have we seen, mm. right? And then you also have a situation where we're planning to spend over 200 billion or thereabouts mm. uh, for palliatives and, you know, the cost of transportation. <laughs> it doesn't really make sense. So I feel like usually with all of this comparison, what it does is it just exposes our weakness as a country and puts us out there. I agree with you, Mercy, because if I have to do a bit of um, basic economics, you know, if we were to really do some comparison uh, based on um, what the average Nigerian earns, uh, that's uh, the minimum wage of about 30,000. Uh, if you were going to just uh, uh, get uh, the value in dollars, that amounts to about um, six dollars. You know, that's what the average Nigerian you know earns as a minimum wage every month. You know, if you want to go for that, you now divide the six dollars over. 30 days you now know how much which is less than <laughs> less than one what? cent <laughs> that's what we leave on so, the daily basis less than one cent so it's not up to what it's not up to what again you know, because i know i know i know that in ghana we're looking at 12 cities now mm. uh about 12 cities that's okay. what like i think it's for the if i'm not mistaken okay if you put all um, all of that together like if you multiply it and mm in a day or thereabout, you're looking at 12 cities, that's about $2 or thereabout. You can imagine. And again, so the average Nigerian pays uh, about uh, about 50 cents, you know. Uh, for, it's not up to, you're saying it's not up to a dollar? For, no, I'm talking about to buy to buy uh, fuel. Okay. A pump price of fuel is over, is over 200, it's about 200 naira. And if you do the math, at the end of the day, you're paying uh, uh, 50 to 60 cents to actually buy you know, uh, uh, fuel when you indeed end about it's really, See, about let, let's say dollars, this is it, it is totally know, monthly. embarrassing that we begin to compare ourselves with the likes of... I mean, I'm not mm. saying that, you know, these countries are not doing very well. You yeah. put yourself against uh, Uganda. You put yourself up against, you know, Togo. That's the standard and, uh, of living in Uganda. Uh, I'm sure they actually Kenya, live above $2. Dollars, you know, daily. <laughs> but that's just the situation of things in Niger. So if we're doing a uh, comparison as by you know, vis a vis what other uh, countries are paying for the price of fuel, we should also do a holistic, uh, you know, comparison vis a vis the purchasing power, vis a vis, you know, the standard of living, the cost of living in Niger. So that way we can indeed, you know, pat ourselves in the back and say, yes, we are paying uh, so much, you know, or so little for fuel in the country. We step on the brakes right now. When we return, we'll definitely come through with Off the Press. We do have a guest who will join us to make sense of all of the, of all of the big stories that we'll be making it on a national daily. Please stick around.